Let me try to introduce the first concept in uh, sales and distribution, which we call it as an enterprise structure. So before we try to record any particular transaction in SAP, we need to make sure the company org structure is developed. So that's going to be the first topic, enterprise structure. Or you can also call it as organizational structure as well. For interest class, I'm going to be explaining few of the terminologies. Once we come to know the understanding of the terminologies, we are going to be taking one business model and based on that business model, we start to do the configurations required. Okay, so here. On one side, I'm trying to call it as a domain terminology or you can call it as a layman terminology and on second side, SAP terminology. So how we are going to be mapping a particular term in SAP. Now the first thing or first term we need to be having a knowledge on, we try to call it as a client or a company. Client or company, this is the first thing. Now I've clearly explained like what exactly this client is all about what they do because they are the one who want to use SAP application. So all manufacturing companies, trading companies, service oriented companies, we are going to be calling them as clients over here. So I picked up a lot of examples which companies are trying to use SAP application for their business. So these are all companies which we are going to be calling them as clients. Okay. So in SAP terms also, it's going to be the same terminology used. So there is no change in it. In SAP also, we use the same terminology, client itself. But so what is exactly the job role of a client? What they do? So they are going to be the one who will be allocating the budget for SAP implementation. How much amount on SAP need to be spent? That figure is going to be provided by the client. Okay, And we are going to be doing the implementation according to their requirements. So he's the highest level in enterprise structure. That means he is the one who will be taking all the decisions which is required for the business. So in case if he is not happy with the SAP performance, he can even scrap the project as well. That's what you mean by highest level. Okay. So how much amount need to be spent on SAP? It's basically the client who will be fixing up the budget. I'm just trying to take up an example over here. Let's say Reliance Company is there. Or let's take in a broader one, Tata. Now, Tata is there. Uh, we know this Tata is trying to run multiple business over here. Like, for example, Tata Steel, Tata Powers, MCG, Total Business, are into Insurance. Constructions, IT. So this particular company is trying to run multiple business over here. Multiple business. So investment on each and every business is not the same. So let's say on this particular business, the company is trying to spend around 4,000 CR. Tata Pals, 1000 CR on hotel industry 1000 CR the so investment is going to be different revenue generation is also going to be different business model is not the same revenues is not the same expenses are not the same so all accounts need to be maintained separately I can't club everything all accounts need to be maintained separately over here because then only we can come to know like how much revenue we made from that particular business. 
So each and every business of a company, we are going to be mapping it as company quote. The second term you need to understand. Each and every business of a company, we are going to be mapping it as a company quote. Now what information this company code is going to be providing us over here. Now this is nothing but it provides the information related to balance sheet. This balance sheet is all about profit and loss statement. It's all about profit and loss statement. By investing an X amount on a particular business, how much revenue we made it or how much loss we made it, that information will be provided by the company code. Because at the end of each and every financial year, the company need to release the statements, whether the company is performing in profit or loss. And if you want to run any particular business in India, we need to get the, or any other part of the world, you need to get the permissions from that government. So we can call it as a legal entity. Legal entity. So each and every business of a company, we are going to be mapping it as a company code. And why we require this? To generate a balance sheet. And when this balance sheet can be generated? When payments are recorded. What type of payments? It can be incoming payments or outgoing payments. Or in simple terms, we can call this one account receivables and account payables. To prepare everything, then only we can know whether the company is in profit or loss. So all payments need to be recorded in SAP application over here. And this particular organizational unit, we try to call it as in highest level in financial accounting. We are going to be calling it as a highest level in financial accounting. Okay, so each and every module will be having one organizational unit which will be addressed as in highest level. So in financial accounting, it's going to be the company code. Okay, so there's one way of how we are going to be mapping a company code over here. Now, I'm just trying to take one more example of a Samsung company. You know, this Samsung is trying to sell only electronic goods. They don't have any other sister business like this. They are trying to sell only electronic goods, but at different geographical locations. Like they try to sell the products in UK, in India, in USA, in Asia, in Gulf. At different locations, they are trying to sell the products. It, same products or it may be different. So based on this geographical locations also, we are going to be creating a company code because currency of transactions at different geographical location varies products sold varies accounts maintenance varies okay your financial year also is going to be getting varied because in india it's going to be april to march in uk in usa it is going to be jan to december okay so based on this geographical locations we can also map it as a company code over here okay but this is very much mandatory because whatever payments are recorded is getting updated against company code level against company code level okay so you need to know as a consultant when you get into a particular project like how many company codes need to be created for that particular business so for that, first thing you need to basically analyze the complete business and based on that only you can propose a solution for that. So how everything need to be mapped up. Now going ahead over here. Now next term which I wanted to introduce is factory. Or we can call it as manufacturing unit. Place where all our production activities are going to be done place where all our production activities are done. So this factory of manufacturing unit in SAP terms, we try to call it as plant. It's a terminology used, plant. Activities remain the same, only the naming convention is getting changed. So in SAP terms, we call it as a plant. So plant is nothing but a place where inventory management is going to be executed. 
we maintain the stock levels, inventory management, storage, where we stall all different types of materials, raw materials, semi-finish, finished product, everything. Okay. And second one, it is place where production activities are done, where we change the status of the materials from raw material to semi-finish, from semi-finish to finished product, where all production activities are going to be performed. So, here you need to know plant is used in two ways. One, for storage. Second, for production, for manufacturing. So, instead of calling it as a factory or manufacturing unit, in SAP terms, we try to call it as a plant. Simple. And for one company or one business can have multiple plants maintained at different locations. Factors can be maintained at different locations. So please try to understand the terminologies, how it's going to be used. So instead of calling it as a factory, we are trying to call it as a plant. That's it. Nothing more than that. Now, when I'm talking about this inventory management, where we need to maintain the stock levels. Now, where do you maintain it? Because in one plant, we are going to be having different types of materials, raw materials, semi-finished, finished products, scrap products, the returns products, there are going to be different types of materials. So all that materials cannot be updated at one location, right? Because everything is going to be getting mixed up. So it is going to be difficult for us to analyze which stock came back or which stock has been issued. It's going to be a crap. So for that reason, what we do inside the plan, we try to maintain storage location inside the plant we are going to be maintaining storage locations or technically speaking definition for this is going to be subdivision of plant we are going to be dividing the plant into storage locations for storage purpose if you take an example of an uh, 3 bhk apartment like i can use one bedroom for storing only raw materials, one bedroom for finished product, one bedroom for semi-finished product. Okay, so in the same way, within the plant, we try to maintain multiple storage locations for storing different types of materials. One for raw material, one for semi-finished, one for finished product. Like this, we try to maintain multiple storage locations within the plant. Now, why we need to maintain so many story locations, how it is going to be benefited for the business. Like first thing, we can get accurate stock count report. We can go for generation of stock count report over here. So how much stock is physically available in the inventory, we can get that. So with the help of that particular report, we can ask our production team to do the manufacturing or we can ask our purchasing team to purchase a stock or we can tell the sales team as well. So for which product we have a lot of stock which need to be sold. So all that analysis can be done easily. And second, stock rotation. A product which has been manufactured first need to be sold first. So for stock rotation process also, we are going to be using this one. Okay. So there are going to be a lot of advantages we are going to be getting by maintaining multiple storage locations within the plant over here. So always remember these storage locations are going to be within the plant. That's the reason we try to call it as subdivision of plant. Subdivision of plant. Okay. Now next term, Adans. warehouses. These things we hear it very often. Godons are warehouses. Now, what we do in Godons or warehouses, we use it only for storage. We don't do anything, only for storage. So, these Godons are warehouses, in SAP terms, we are going to be calling it as depot. The depot is purely used for what purpose? Inventory management. So, there will be no production. There will be no production. We don't do any kind of manufacturing over here. You need to know the difference between the plant and the depot. Plant, 
both activities are going to be executed in DIPA purely inventory management. We use it for storage, not for any other purpose. No production. We don't do any kind of production over here. Now, where to use it? How it is going to be used? So I'm just trying to take up an example over here. Let's say we have a company by the name Royal Enfield. Try to manufacture bikes and they have the plant in Tamil Nadu. Now, why they have established their plant in Tamil Nadu? Because due to different reasons. Let's say that government is providing a lot of subsidiaries. So that's the reason this company has established that plant in Tamil Nadu. Let's say. Okay. But they are trying to sell the products all over the India. They are trying to sell the products all over India. So whenever customer places an order for a particular product, what happens? So let's say the customer is in Jammu, Kashmir. Okay. So he's placing an order. So whenever you place an order, stock need to be dispatched from where? From uh, Tamil Nadu. And this will be taking a lot of delivery time. Because product need to be transported to Jammu and Kashmir and it need to be delivered to the customer. So it will be taking a lot of time. In this particular cycle, what happens? Customer may also cancel the order. So to reduce this delivery time, what we do? Company will be establishing depot at different locations. So let's say one depot in uh, Jammu and Kashmir, one depot in Delhi. One depot in AP. Like this, we try to maintain multiple depots at different locations. So what I do, I manufacture the product over here, but I'm going to be transferring the stock to the depots. I'm going to be transferring the stock to the depots. So whenever a customer from that particular location is placing an order from the nearest depot, I'm going to be supplying the stock. Instead of supplying the stock from plant, I'm going to be supplying the stock from the nearest depot so that customer can receive the product on time. So this concept is what we try to call it as stock transfers. Where we try to transfer the stock from one location to another location. So if you want to work with the stock transfers, we require a depot. And we require a plant. Okay. So please understand the difference between plant and the depot and what is the use of it. Why we need to create so many depots or so many plants. There are going to be different reasons for that. Okay. So all these things you need to work it out. Company, company code, plant, storage location, depot creation, everything we need to be having a knowledge on how to use it.